Okay. So, I was contemplating the idea of ritual and ceremony and how these things have kind of been expunged from our culture or spun in a way that is mundane. And so I opened this book up and uh, this is what I opened it to. So I'm going to read some from this and we'll see where it takes us. The fact is that the mad rush of the last 100 years has, le has left us out of breath. We have had no time to swallow our spittle. We know that the automated machine is here to liberate us and show us the way back to Eden, that it will do for us what no revolution, no doctrine, no prayer, no promise could do. But we do not know that we have arrived. We stand there panting, caked with sweat and dust, afraid to realize that the seventh day of the second creation is here, and the ultimate Sabbath is spread out before us. Eric Hoffer, The Temper of Our Times. Yeah, and this is uh, a part of the program is to keep us distracted, to keep us exhausted, to have us forget what true rest and regrounding, re-earthing. Basically to always keep us sort short-circuited, disconnected from the literal energy, the electric current. It can it can be called many things, the chi, the ki, the prana. But essentially it, it's spirit. It's keeping us disconnected from the spirit of our, our home, the earth. And it is shortening our lifespans. And we are aiding this process the more we get caught and short circuit within just our brain and disconnect from the brain body connection and the mind and spirit realization. So that quote there, like, uh, I, I don't have the same feeling uh, about the automated machines, but looking at it from a perspective of everything is a tool, you know, and it's up to us how we choose to use or be used by it. Do we use the tool or do we become the tool? At certain points in our lives, Sometimes, in times of crisis, we decide to challenge the present. Many cultures have rites of passage or initiation in which you are expected to question yourself and your reality. There are certain changes in a life that require information, guidance, ritual, and support. We need a boost to the next phase or stage. We need validation of what is happening. We have few initiation rituals left in Western culture, and most of us need more thoughtful transitions from one age to another. We are beginning to treat midlife passage 
passage as one of these special times of review. It is considered a time to look at the first half of your lives in order to decide what you will value for the last half. The Plains Indians used a vision quest as a mark of the movement from boy to warrior. During the process, you are expected to stretch your senses into another world to gain the strength of a totem animal. You were then invincible and would be safe in battle. A young man went into the hills alone for many days. He might deny himself food and water until his familiar came. He might sacrifice a finger joint if all else failed. Pain has always been a powerful teacher. After successfully seeing or hearing his spirit animal, he would return home with a special song to be sung in times of fear or to be used as a symbol of his communion and lifetime linkage with his totem. Many Native American names are drawn from the first vision experiences of childhood. Many cultures no longer teach the history, the variety of experience, the skills of the vision quest, so generations grow up without an understanding of the stirrings they feel at different times in their lives. We make up names for the obvi obvious passages, baptism, confirmation, adolescence, birthday, first holy communion, bar mitzvah, menopause, retirement. But we do not clarify their impact. Most of us notice when a birthday or crisis jolts us into questioning our existing environment or our current reality. A perceived failure might create instability somewhere in our lives. The balance has been disrupted. The harmony of whatever plateau we had previously reached is lost. Divorce, work problems, illness, or other losses shake up our routine. Such divine discontent Think of them as tweaks from the gods, it creates anxiety, perhaps depression, grief, or illness, and we realize we must re-examine what we thought was under control. All of us get strong signals when it is time to do personal homework. You may be ill or less resistant to illness, losing sleep, tired all the time, seeing a counselor, tense, Examining a new religion, going to a class, joining some new leader you think might have the answers. So yeah, initiation, this is something that uh, many, many people will gravitate towards. Some kind of, and it's going to be a different calling, a, a different manifestation for, for everyone. And there's, there's many different forms of initiation. There are a lot of young people that instinctively, and this is one of those periods where we're at a certain age in life and we have certain feelings, things that we feel pulled towards, but that we're not taught those things unless our parents are, are wise and wisdom keepers, or we 
come across wisdom, wisdom keepers or true teachers within our life and not teachers that just regurgitate what they've been told to teach without really thinking it over themselves at all. So, many young people will be drawn towards having this experience of initiation or a vision quest type of experience. And oftentimes, they will seek this through taking some kind of a spirit medicine, a plant spirit medicine, perhaps. And because of the culture that we're in, how we have been encouraged to indulge and fixate and how we relate with things, treat things in a certain manner and kind of skip over the essence of it. This too happens whenever people, some people, a lot of people, decide to take and engage with certain medicines and it is also something that you have to know deep down if you are ready for it or not and this isn't really something that you can talk with anyone else about it's just only you will know it's a feeling that only you will have and you have to get clear on that But when you feel it is time and you are ready, the recommendations that I have given to others is to treat these things as sacrament and if you can, try to find a setting in which you feel as safe as you can, potentially, and if you absolutely feel the need to have someone there, um, maybe as a, I don't know, just kind of a, as a comfort, basically, try, try to make sure that it's someone that also understands what's going on, that, that isn't going to try to quote-unquote fuck with you. Someone that will be there for you, but also knows enough to know just to be quiet and, and to let things happen. So someone you trust, preferably, but also someone that's chill. And if you can, find yourself a guide or a true teacher or shaman. And this can take the form of uh, in the flesh or in spirit. And what I recommend is if you are brave enough to just be by yourself and be alone with just you and everything. Because most people, that terrifies them because they're not used to it. They always have that squirrel running around as, as thoughts and they can't perceive. They only have glimpses and moments where they sense their reality and they read and take in their surroundings without thought. But most of the time, they are perceiving through thought. So it's becoming that filter And that is extremely limiting, especially given the creation and the constructs 
of the linguistics and in the reverberations of certain sounds. But what I recommend is being by yourself, as in you and everything, getting into a meditative state, whatever form that may take, don't conceptualize, get out of your mind, uh, get out of your head, not the mind, but the, get out of your thought stream and start going into the senses. This is going to be called many different things. Uh, meditating, going into state, um, changing your vibration, attuning, aligning. So yes, I, rec I would recommend n the nighttime, and I do enjoy my full moon rituals. So if you feel a connection with the moon, have your initiation ritual under the full moon. Out in nature, preferably. And just listen. Open up and listen. And feel. And that's all you really need to do. Focus on that, and everything else will just happen. And if you can shut up and listen and learn, then that is when the greatest, in my opinion and experience, the greatest benefits will be uh, reaped and realized, experienced, allowed. It's an, it's an allowing. And then oftentimes, whenever we are able to, we have more experience in this state of being and being alone, but also realizing that there is no such thing as alone because of what you will feel, the connection with everything else that's living around you. You will, you will feel that. It won't be a, oh, I think I feel it thing. <laughs> nope. It's um, out of thought and into feeling. You don't need to think about it because you feel it and know it. And so the thought actually slows it, slows down this process. It, 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 it disconnects. From this deep, from this deep state. Of interconnectedness. Now that's not to say that you can't speed up your thought in certain ways, and it's all about engagement and perception. Your perception changes, and this is this is the true reason here for why these things, these initiations and rituals and ceremonies. Of truth and the connection with nature and cycles. When we engage this, our perception changes because our felt experience changes. As within, so without. This is gnosis. We, we, we engage the wisdom directly and that becomes thought. It doesn't, it doesn't get filtered through words. It is kind of like living the dream and being lucid that you are at once 
dreaming and also being awake. And your waking life and dream life, or whatever terms you wish to use, they meld into one, and that becomes the language. This is kind of the language of uh, working with these spirit, plant spirit medicines. They can help, they can help be guides, and in, in truth, you and your connection with that plant spirit, that becomes your guide. And if you have someone else there helping you or guiding you, that can help at first, but in time you'll find that that will get in the way of your felt connection. It will slow down the process. So oftentimes in these states, the spontaneous things that will manifest in front of you, whatever kind of form that takes, I'm not talking about hallucinations as much as just being out in nature and the, all the life around you, all of it will begin to talk to you and you'll begin, you'll begin to remember that language, what all of the signs mean, how it is all communicating and talking and how you can perceive certain messages and stories from all this communion. And so you will have random, spontaneous guides just, just by how you change your perception. So yeah, I want to talk a little bit about that and then also just that after we've gone through these deeper levels of uh, deep initiation, deep introspective work. Then the practice, whatever kind of practice that you have, say a meditation of yoga, of whatever it may be, these practices, you realize that life is the practice. And so it just melds and bleeds into your life. And it's the same with these certain changes of, of perception throughout our life that we come along. We go through them and then our reality changes because our perception changes what reality is for us. So yeah, there's many forms of initiation. Some people uh, do other extreme things. Um, you can have initiations just with any kind of extreme you want to go through. Say uh, an extreme physical obstacle, a marathon of sorts, and initiation into the cold, cold therapy. Um, just even what is called pranayama, or certain breathing techniques, what is considered hyperventilation. Look into Wim Hof. The more you engage that and engage in cold, you will realize that you are initiating yourself in a manner of speaking. And as a little time will pass, you will realize the benefits that is happening within and then also how that's changing your perception of what is so-called without.
Okay, I'll end it with uh, some chill vibes here. So if you want to listen to it, cool. If you don't, I hope you uh, enjoyed. Peace out. Thank you.